Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I'm back with a review of a brand new microphone from Soyuz or Soyuz, the 1973. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $800. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. And also, in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know, Sayu sent me this microphone free of charge for the sake of making this review, but they don't get to review this video, and they get zero editorial oversight. Then for this review, I'm running the microphone directly through the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, Gain set at 1 o'clock, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now, let's talk about what comes in the box. What a shocker, you are going to get the microphone. You will get a firm mount as well as a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter and a little bit of documentation which includes a frequency response graph of your specific microphone and a few signed quality assurance cards from the people who worked on your mic. Then as far as the build quality, I have zero complaints about this thing because it is built extremely well and durable, so much so that it could be used as a weapon to smash yourself in the mouth and the microphone won't be damaged and all you'll be left with is a fat lip. No, I'm not speaking from personal experience. Why do you ask? The microphone does have an all-metal chassis and a metal mesh grill with no give to it. As we move around the sides, there are no switches there, but on the bottom you will find the XLR port, and you will find a dual negative 10 or negative 20 decibel pad switch, and if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Russia. Next, as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 30 hertz to 18 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 32 dB, a self noise of 18 dBA, a max SPL of 140 decibels, an impedance of 150 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the 1973 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's see how this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about six inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the 1973. Now I'm about two feet away from the 1973, and about four feet away from the Soyuz 1973. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and the spacebar key. Z. Now here is how the 1973 sounds six inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room about six inches away. Next, I want to see how effective the provided mount and the microphone are at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. And just to be thorough, now I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to see what it sounds like when you engage the pad. So currently I am in the neutral mode and I will go to negative 10 dB. There you go. Back to zero and then jumping to negative 20 dB. There you go. Jumping back to zero. So you do not have any kind of gradual attenuation. It is just a quick negative 10, zero, negative 20. 
Now, like we always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition and hear the microphone in a bit of context. We'll start on the mic we're reviewing. This is the 1973 six inches off, gain set at one o'clock, and here's how it sounds. All right, first up, we are on the Audio-Technica AT2020, which goes for about $100, still six inches off, and my gain is still set at one o'clock. And here is what $100 versus $800 sounds like. Let's go back and do a bunch more. Back again on the 1973, nothing has changed. Make sure to check the lower third. Here is how it sounds. Let's go to another mic. Next, we are on the Neat King B version 2, which is a very chunky boy. This goes for about $170, six inches off, gain set at one o'clock, and here is how this compares to the Psyuse 1973. Let's go back to it and do some more. Back again for a third time, this is the 1973, this is your palate cleanser, let us go to another microphone. Next we are on the Lewitt LCT440 which goes for about $270, this is a very bright microphone, 6 inches off, gain set at 1 o'clock, and here is how this sounds compared to a much tamer top end microphone in the Soyuz. All right, this is the 1973 again. Get a good feel for it, listen to it, and let's hear another microphone. Now we are on the Rode NT1, which also goes for about $270. I am still six inches off. My gain is still set at one o'clock. And here is how this sounds against the Soyuz 1973. Let's do more comparisons. Did my voice crack? I don't know how many more we have, but this is the 73 again, just to cleanse your ear palate, your ear wax, I don't know. Let's go to the next microphone. Next, I am on the Shure KSM32, which goes for about $600, so now we're only $200 difference. I am six inches off, my gain is set at one o'clock. Make sure to check the lower third, because I will have to boost this a bit more than the others, and let's go back to the Soyuz and do some more comparisons. All right, we have a few more to go, but again, this is the 1973, six inches away, gain at one o'clock. Let us go to another microphone. Next, we are on the Neumann, hello Neumann, TLM 102. At the time of recording, this goes for about $730, six inches off, gain set at one o'clock, and this is what a pretty much direct competitor to the Sayu sounds like. There you go, Neumann, hello Neumann, against Sayu's. Let's do some more. Would you believe me if I told you that we were on the 1973 to cleanse your ear hole palette? Because we are, and we have another microphone to listen to now, so let's go to that. Now we are on the Austrian Audio OC818. That's going to drive you crazy. This goes for about $1,250, six inches off, gain set at one o'clock. Check the lower third because I will have to boost this one quite a bit more than the others, and there you go. There is a loud car outside and I want to bang my head against the wall. No car needs to be that loud. Stop it. I hate all you choose to be. Let's go back to the Soyuz and do some more. We are about to go to the penultimate microphone or the second to last microphone, I think. And this is the 73. Let's go to the second to last microphone. Now I'm sure this is the comparison that a lot of people have been waiting for because now I am on the SU-023 bomblet. The 1973 uses the same capsule as the bomblet. The electronics inside of the body are just different. This microphone goes for $1,500. So it is $700 more expensive than the 1973. Which of these microphones do you prefer the sound of? Do you like the 73 or the bomblet better? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's go back to the 1973 and do, I forgot what we were doing, <laughs> the 1973 and do one more. And we have one final microphone. Y'all know what it's going to be, but first, 1973, six inches off, gain at one o'clock. Let's jump to that last microphone. And finally, we are on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI. This goes for $3,700. I am six inches off, my gain is at one o'clock, and I am living dangerously. <laughs> we are really close to the top. This is too dangerous for me. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filters, and this is how it sounds compared to a dog barking outside. Can I exist 
in a world without... No, I don't want to wish for that. Be careful what you wish for. Because if there was no sound, you couldn't hear me. I couldn't use microphones. So <laughs> I stopped myself before wishing for that. Joke's on you, genie. You're not going to get me that. What am I talking about? That's the comparison. Let's go to the music test. <laughs> I think I'm missing caffeine I am missing all the coffee that I need I will find it or die It's the only thing keeping me alive I don't think I hit those notes, but who knows? Who can tell? I'll tell you who can tell. Everybody who leaves the comments saying, Hey, you missed that note. Terrible. You're not good at singing. Thanks for that. Really appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't plan these. So let's just go to the conclusion because I don't know. I have nothing to say. My mind is blank. Conclusion time. Move it along. All right. I think this is another very solid offering from Soyuz, but it's certainly not going to be for everybody. And first up, as far as pros, the controlled top end on this thing I found quite easy to listen to. And secondly, the plosive rejection on this thing I found very respectable. Yes, you will still need to have a pop filter, but when you did hit it with a plosive, it didn't sound like the world was ending. And then as far as cons, the biggest issue for me is the resonance of the microphone. So if you are near the mic, do not touch the microphone and do not touch the microphone stand because that will make it into the microphone. Also, if you have it on a boom arm that is attached to your desk, don't touch the desk. That will be transferred through to it. And on that note, I really wish that it did come with a shock mount because the shock rejection really is lacking. And the last con for me is the self noise of 18 dBA is getting a little bit high. It's not the worst. But if you need clinically dry and noiseless recordings, this isn't going to offer that. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I really liked it here. The low end was nice and controlled and it wasn't boomy. The mids were forward and punchy, but they didn't get into the territory of being honky at all. And then the top end gave me this really aggressive sound, which is something that I'm always looking for, but it is still a bit of a tamer top end. I don't think it got to be too much until I got to the uppermost register of the guitar. Overall, on this application, I thought it was great. Then on the acoustic guitar, I think it offers some very usable tones. The lows and low mids are pretty full, but they don't come across muddy or too overpowering. The mids are a bit more forward and articulate, and that really became apparent to me when I played a little bit softer on the acoustic. You could really hear that mid forwardness when the pick was hitting the strings. But on that note, you don't have all that top end information off of the guitar pick on the strings. It doesn't have that same detail as an SDC, but it does still maintain some detail. It is not completely dead. You can still tell it's a condenser. It is just more of a softer, tamer top end if that's what you're going for. Next up for singing, I think that's my favorite application for this microphone. The top end isn't overly bright, but it's not dead. It still has this nice sheen to it, and it still has this nice amount of clarity. The mids are also forward and punchy and clear, but they don't come across too forward or honky or just overpowering. And then the lows and low mids are still there. They offer some support, but they aren't boomy or muddy. Just overall, a really great sound for singing to my ears. And finally for spoken word, in the low mids we do get a bit of support, but it isn't overpowering or muddy sounding. The mids in general do come across a bit congested and nasally, 
Not the biggest fan there. And then the top end of this microphone is going to be a bit tamer. It is not overly detailed. It is not overly articulate. It is easy to listen to and a bit soft, which I do like. But overall, given that more forward midsection that is congested and nasally, it isn't my personal favorite. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Sayuse 1973 for some people? If you're a musician, I think this is a really interesting option because for singing vocals, you get this detailed top end, but it isn't overhyped. And then you get this really articulate midsection that is punchy and forward and awesome sounding. On the electric guitar overall, I really love the tone because it gives you this aggressive sound. As long as you aren't doing high piercing solos, I think it will work fantastically. And then on the acoustic, it is not my favorite sound, but I think it is workable. But then we get to spoken word. And for that application, I am very on the fence. I do like the tamer top end because that is something I enjoy for long form spoken word microphones. I like the low mids on this thing because it does support the vocals, but it isn't overpowering. It isn't muddy. It isn't unclear. But then we get to the mids. The mids in general are congested sounding and a bit nasally. And for a voice like mine, that is very unflattering because I already have a bit of a nasally voice and I don't need a microphone that exaggerates that. If you do have a voice that isn't nasally and you do need a bit more help in the mids, you need that forwardness to make your voice sound a bit more punchy, this may be a much better fit for you. But if you do have a voice that's similar to mine, a bit more nasally, it's just not the most flattering fit. So if you're looking for a microphone that does have that tamer top end, that mid forwardness, and a bit of support in the low mids that isn't too much, and you are going to be able to be careful in terms of resonance and shock rejection, I think this is an interesting option. Personally, I am a much bigger fan of the bomblet. I think what they do with the electronics resolve those issues that I have with this, but at this price point, very interesting if that's the sound that you're looking for. All right, that is all that I've got for you today. If you did find this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, big ol' thumbs down. If you want another video, go check the one out directly beneath me. I bet you are going to absolutely love it. Perfect video for you. That's why I made it. I made it specifically for you. Watch the vi- I made it for you. Why won't you watch the video? Come on. These people over here, that was, these people are amazing. They support the channel at $5 or more. I love them. And I will talk to you in a week or so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you on a later date. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa. Boop.